Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Rowe, and I am about to show you how to set up the egg osmosis lab um, that we're going to be working on later with this week. So for today, it's just getting it soaking so that we can get the shell off. So basically, we're just going to use an egg, and the egg is a great model for a cell as we're looking at how materials can move in and out of cells through things, processes called osmosis and diffusion. We're going to be learning later this week that those are known as passive transport because no energy is required from the cell to move these things in and out. That's something we'll come to later as we do our observations. So the setup for this is pretty simple. Some of you may have done this in middle school. It's a fun lab that you can do with any younger siblings. Um, you need, you're going to need some vinegar, any kind of vinegar. I happen to have some rice vinegar. My regular cheap white vinegar is almost gone, so that's why I pulled out this one. I probably have some red wine vinegar somewhere, or um, if I really dug around, sometimes there's cleaning vinegar. Um, it just It's white vinegar that's a higher concentration. It doesn't matter. Whatever vinegar, you get, vinegar that you have, and then you need a container. Um, I prefer something with glass, so I have like, a, this is I think a salsa jar that I cleaned out, so go dig in your recycling bin, go find any old jars. Um, the egg will swell a little bit, so when I compared the size of the egg to the opening, I was concerned that if the egg swelled, I might not get it out. That's why I'm not going to use this jar. So I went and dug around, and I found myself an old, a canning jar that I have. So I'm going to use a canning jar. Um, it's actually better if you're going to use a lid to leave the lid loose. Um, the only reason I'm putting a lid on is A, it's going to be sitting around for a few days. I don't want to get knocked over by mistake. And um, B, I don't want to smell vinegar in my house the whole time. But please be aware, and I'm going to show you this. I'm going to come back to this one later. This is one I set up this morning. I don't know if you guys can see that this lid is bulging a little bit. Uh, you're not really seeing it. I can see it a little bit. It's got a little bulge to it. Um, I did release some of the gas earlier. You can see all the bubbles on this egg as this shell is dissolving. It is producing a lot of CO2 gas. And so all that carbon dioxide is going to build up. And so you don't want to have a situation where your jar explodes. So if you are going to put a lid on, oh, can you hear it? Make sure you let that gas out periodically or keep the lid on loose if it's in a place where it's not going to get knocked over. Okay, so I am I like to keep it a little bit loose, but like I said, I don't want to be smelling vinegar in my house either. So that's why I did put a lid on it, but be aware you don't want to have any exploding jars. Not something that your parents are going to appreciate. So to start, I'm going to need about a cup, one to two cups of vinegar, just enough to cover the egg so that we can, the egg, the shell of the egg is made out of calcium carbonate. And the acetic acid in the vinegar is going to react with the calcium carbonate. Now you can see I was right. I definitely don't have enough vinegar there to cover the egg. So this has been in my cupboard for years. I was trying to find a date on it. Best used by April 2019. So I think this is a good one for me to use up. So this is these labs are a great opportunity to find things in your cupboards that are really old that maybe have expired because you don't want to use the good stuff. You don't want to use something that mom's going to need tomorrow night for cooking um, and then have mom get upset with us for doing a lab. Okay. If I had apple cider vinegar, it doesn't matter. You can see this one added a little yellow tinge to it. Whatever you've got will do. And for those of you who don't have these materials at home, you can also watch the video, but make sure that you still fill out your observations in the labs um, as we go. And in the next few days as I'm going to do this lab, we're also going to start adding some masses. I'm using a spoon to transfer the egg into the jar because the egg will just drop to the bottom and crack. I do not want the shell to crack at this point. Um, so I'm just going to, oh, before I slip it in, I started to talk for a moment about why this is such a good model for a cell. One thing that most people don't realize is just underneath the shell is a membrane. That membrane's really tight against the shell, and most people don't realize that it's there. And then underneath that membrane is your egg white, which is similar to what's the fluid part of the cell that contains all the organelles. Go ahead, guys. It begins with a C. It's called... That's right, cytoplasm. So the egg white to me is equivalent to the cytoplasm. You've got the cell membrane. The membrane functions in a very similar way. And then the egg yolk is in some ways very similar to the nucleus of our, of our cell. So it makes a great 
macroscopic model of a cell that we can use um, to model some of the processes that would be hard for us to see otherwise. So I'm going to use a spoon to drop it in carefully so that I don't crack my egg when I drop it. And that's it. Now, what's really cool, bring this up to the camera, hopefully, it's the downside of a mason jar. It's got writing on all the sides. I'm trying to find a place where it's clear enough. I can already see tiny bubbles starting to form on this egg. They're pretty small right now. Can you see we're already starting to get some gas? So the reaction is almost immediate. You're going to immediately see that acetic acid reacting with the eggshell and starting to dissolve it. As a matter of fact, I, I haven't done this in years, but when you um, dye Easter eggs, I believe there's a little bit of vinegar in that Easter egg dye. And my guess would be to help that dye to get, penetrate the shell so you can get that color in. Obviously, you don't want to soak it too long. So we're going to soak this for at least a day overnight. We're not going to do this lab for two days. Two day soak makes it even easier. I put this egg in. I'm going to cap it so I don't spill it. About eight or ten hours ago. I did this this morning. Got him spinning. You can already see as it spins by, a lot of the shell has already peeled off as it's dissolving. And underneath, so I could use this egg any point now. Um, you can see it's floating because of all the gases causing this thing to float. A lot of the shell has already come off. What's really going to be cool, and I'll show this to you when I do it, is when I take this out and rinse it off, I'm going to be able to rub the rest of that residue off of the egg and have a semi, um, I won't say clear, it's not like I'm going to be seeing right through it, but I'll definitely, it'll be kind of opaque, an opaque kind of membrane that I'll be able to see, um, see a little bit more as I rub this off. So it's a really kind of cool lab. It's going to feel like a bouncy ball. It is not a bouncy ball. It will, if you drop it, it will just break and splatter open and you'll have raw egg everywhere. So do you want to do this in the sink? Also notice how much it is swelling. I don't know if you can see the size difference as it's soaking, okay? So this guy's just getting going and I'm gonna set him aside. Now I have a backup egg in case my first egg breaks. Again, I'm just nice and loose. I don't wanna worry about the gas is exploding on me overnight. So I'm gonna keep these lids loose, um, but just enough to keep the vinegar down, smell down. That's it, do your setup. Put it aside and then I'll be back to show you the next step once we're ready to take the shell off and do our do the next step of this lab. And uh, till next time.